What's going on guys and welcome to the next crack a pack episode today We are opening up eternal masters a fantastic set a lot of awesome value in this one uh, Also a very fun draft set uh, and of course as always we're gonna look at this from a draft perspective So we'll try and figure out what our pack one pick one would actually be uh, if we were drafting this so uh, I did get to draft this a little bit. I didn't get it as much as I would have liked to but I did open quite a lot of it, so I do really like this set. Uh, our first common here is Mog Fanatic. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. Uh, you can sacrifice it and it deals 1 damage to target creature or player. Uh, I actually really like this card as a 1-drop. It's a really good, just if you're in a red aggro aggressive deck, uh, it's really, really good because you can sack it in response to a block, you can sack it however you'd like, and just have it deal that damage to whoever you need it to. Uh, it's really awesome that it hits players and creatures as well. It's very flexible. Sure, it's not a lot of damage, but it is still a one drop, and so to be able to play this on turn one just means on board you're going to be a little bit ahead early on. Uh, I do like this. Obviously not a great first pick, but still a good card. Uh, second thoughts, an instant for four and a white exile target attacking creature and draw a card. Uh, this is just pretty good removal. It's a little bit uh, less flexible than a lot of removal just because they have to be attacking. That being said, it is instant speed and you do get to replace it immediately. Uh, and for five mana, you exile, not just destroy, which is fantastic. Uh, I really do like that. Uh, I love this over the Fanatic for sure. It's just decent removal. Uh, again, not the best, but definitely something I'd be interested in. Uh, Innocent Blood, a sorcery for one black. Each player sacrifices a creature. Uh, this is a pretty interesting card, actually. This was in some like World Championship deck years and years ago, uh, early 2000s, but uh, definitely a powerful card. There are actually decks that would love something like this just because they can use the sack outlet. Uh, but I would prefer something a little more open like Second Thoughts over something like this early on. Oops. Uh, Keldon Marauders is a 3-3 for one and a red. It has Vanishing 2, so when it enters the battlefield, it comes in with two time counters on it. Uh, and then at the beginning of your upkeep, you remove a time counter from it, and when the last one is removed, you have to sacrifice it. Uh, so it only sticks around for two turns, but when it enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield, it deals one damage to target player. And let's keep in mind it's a 3-3 for 2, which is hugely powerful. Uh, this, again, very similar to the Fnatic, very, very good in a very like aggressive red, mono-red style deck. Uh, absolutely love this card. Not necessarily a first pick by any means, uh, but still very powerful. Uh, Thornwield Archer is a 2-1 for 1 and a green. Uh, it has a reach and death touch. This is a pretty straightforward card, uh, but that being said, it's one that I like. Uh, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a defensive 2-drop, I will say, but uh, with Death Touch, it's it's actually pretty powerful. Death Touch should never be undervalued in draft, uh, and because this has reach, it's able to actually block and profitably trade off, I will say, with uh, any flyer, ideally, unless they have First Strike or something like that, a way around the Death Touch. But really powerful card uh, for a 2-drop. Again, not something that I want early on, but definitely something, if I was in green, that I wouldn't be ha unhappy excuse me, picking up. Uh, stupefying Touch, one in a blue for an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and the enchanted creature's activated abilities can't be activated. Uh, this card I'm not a huge fan of. There are definitely instances where you'd maybe want to sideboard this in uh, against very specific kind of bomb rare style cards, uh, but this is not a high pick in my opinion. It's not removal. It's just sort of like dumbing down a big creature ideally. Uh, something that has some sort of activated ability, you can get rid of it, and it does replace itself, which is good. Uh, but in general, just not all that powerful of a card. Uh, Sylvan Might is one in a green for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample. Uh, it also has a flashback cost of two and two green, so you can cast it from your graveyard with the flashback cost, and then you exile it. Uh, I really like this as a combat trick. Obviously, if you're in a green creature-heavy deck, uh, it sometimes is really good just to have a couple combat tricks in there. Sylvan Might is a couple combat tricks on its own. Uh, you get to play it for two and then you can flash it back for four if need be. It is instant speed, which is awesome. I really like this. Again, not a high pick, but definitely something I'd be interested in. Uh, counter spell, a very straightforward card. An instant for two blue counter target spell. Uh, this is the like quintessential counter spell. It's fantastic. Uh, absolutely love it. I generally like it in draft as well because it's not uh, it's a flexible card, it can counter anything, which is great. Uh, something like Essence Scatter or Negate is a little bit less valuable. I think Essence Scatter more so than is is higher value than Negate uh, in draft particularly, but 
Uh, a card like Counterspell is just good against everything. Uh, and so if you're looking for interaction, Counterspell is about as good as you can get. So I really like this. I don't know if I like it more than Second Thoughts. I think I do, honestly. I just think it's a more powerful card. Uh, Phyrexian Rager is a 2-2 for 2 and a black. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose one life. Uh, I really like this card. I think this is uh, just a really solid 3-drop. It's not like a flagship card by any means, uh, but it does draw you a card so it keeps your engines turning. And it's a 2-2 two, two for 3. Yeah, it's a little underpowered, but it's going to be able to block or do something uh, for the game. It's not just like it's a 1-1 one, one or something really, really terrible. Uh, so this is just a good value card. Uh, not better than Counterspell, I don't think, but I do like it. Uh, Werebear. So uh, this is a really old card, but I really like it. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a green. You can tap it to add green to your mana pool, and it also has Threshold. So uh, it gets plus 3, plus 3 as long as there are 7 or more cards in your graveyard. Uh, this card's interesting. I really like this card, but I don't think it's great in draft. Uh, there are definitely decks that want it, but in general, not super exciting, I don't think. Uh, it just doesn't, I mean, it's just a 4-4 late game, which is fine. Uh, it becomes sort of a bomb. It's not like huge by any means, but it's going to deal some damage for sure, but it's just, it's not that exciting, I don't think. I don't think it's all that good. Uh, Tooth and Claw is our first uncommon. It's an enchantment for three and a red. Uh, sacrifice two creatures to put a 3-1 red beast creature token named Carnivore onto the battlefield. Uh, this is an interesting card solely because uh, it kind of gets around like bad attacks and things like that. Uh, not really because it's like diminishing returns basically. You're kind of lowering from two creatures just down to one. Uh, but if somebody uses a removal spell or something like that, uh, or one or two removal spells, you can actually sack those creatures instead. Still not a very interesting card in my opinion. It doesn't do enough, I don't think, in draft. Uh, so not a huge fan of that. Uh, Sarah Angel, a very classic card. It's a 4-4 four, four for 3 and 2 white uh, with flying and vigilance. I love this card. It's great in draft. Uh, it's just a huge swingy white bomb, uh, and I absolutely love it. I don't know if I love it. I think I like it more than Counterspell for sure. Uh, I'd really like Counterspell in Draft, but Sarah Angel's just sweet. Uh, Thunderclap Wyvern is a 2-3 for 2, a white and a blue. It has Flash, Flying, and other creatures you control with Flying uh, get plus 1, plus 1. This is actually a very, very good card as well. I kind of like this more than Sarah Angel, but we'll see what our rare is, obviously. Uh, this is just a really powerful card. If you're in a blue-white Flyers deck, very classic style deck, then this is the exact card that you want. Uh, it just does so much in that deck, it's great. Uh, in our rare, Deathrite Shaman. Funny enough, that was on the pack art. Um, Deathrite Shaman is a 1-2 for either a black or a green, and it's sort of like a mini planeswalker. So, uh, you can tap it and exile a land card from your graveyard that adds one mana of any color to your mana pool. Uh, so basically, it's a ramp card. You can pay a black and tap it, exile an instant or sorcery card from a graveyard, and each opponent loses two life. Or you can pay a green and tap it and exile a creature card from your graveyard, from a graveyard, excuse me, and you gain two life. So this guy is just the like best one drop in the world. Uh, it's really, really good actually. I love this card. It is kind of widely considered one of the best one drops uh, in the game. And it just does so much. It's insane. I love it. Uh, I don't think it's great in draft, however. Uh, it just doesn't do quite as much. So not going to be picking that. We do get, of course, a foil which has actually got a little bit of a lip there that is uh, bent up. But Humble, an instant for one and a white. Uh, until the end of the turn, target creature loses all abilities and has a base power of toughness uh, zero and one. Not a very exciting card. I think, honestly, the pick might be the Wyvern. I just really like it. Uh, to stay open, I would probably pick Sarah Angel if I was kind of going that route. But I'd, I really like this as a Flyers deck. It's just such a good flagship card. Uh, so I think for me the pick is the Wyvern. Uh, obviously let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree, and if you enjoyed this episode please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below, but with that I'm going to get out of here. I will see you guys in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.